your favored status. Good morning, people at home. Sorry I didn't turn the mic on. Yep, it's on. So, I got to clue you in on a couple of things this morning. One, I did not wear the wrong stole today. Uh, September 29th is St. Michael and All Angels Sunday. Of course, you all knew that, so, you know, I don't even know why I'm telling you. Um, but we're not using St. Michael and All Angels lessons. So, it is technically lectionary, what are we up to, 26, I think? Yes, um, not that that means a whole lot to most people except pastor types, but anyway. Um, but we're going to talk about angels today. So we're going to recognize St. Michael and all angels. And there's a few things about this day that are really unfair to the rest of the angels. But we'll talk about that um, in a little bit too. So just wanted to let you know why I seem to be wearing the wrong color. Actually, this is my all-purpose stole. This is the one I wear when I don't know what color another church is going to use because it's got all of them. So there, I got green and white for, for uh, angels. And that was way too much of an explanation than anybody needed. So, <clears throat> all that, see, can you tell I had my coffee? Um, all that said, let us take some time to prepare our hearts uh, and our lives for worship with the prelude. Good morning, everyone. All heaven and earth proclaim the majesty of God's creative power. Praise God for the amazing and awesome beauty. God has given us codes by which to live together in harmony and peace. In these commandments, God has summed up the ways he must respect one another. Rejoice in the goodness of God. Those who are able, please rise for the confession. <clears throat> Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. <clears throat> Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit 
so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Amen. Our opening hymn is indeed what it says. Hark the herald angels sing. <laughs> hymn 270. <laughs> the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. We continue with the hymn of praise.
Let us pray. Generous God, your Son gave his life that we might come to peace with you. Give us a share of your Spirit, and in all we do, empower us to bear the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from Numbers chapter 11. The rabble among them had a strong craving, and the Israelites also wept again and said, If only we had meat to eat. We remember the fish. We used to eat in Egypt for nothing. The cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the onions, and the garlic. But now our strength is dried up, and there's nothing at all but this manna to look at. Moses heard the people weeping through their families, all at the entrance of their tents. Then the Lord became very angry, and Moses was displeased. So Moses said to the Lord, Why have you treated your servant so badly? Why have I not found favor in your sight, that you laid the burden of all this people on me? Did I conceive all this people? Did I give birth to them, that you should stay, say to me, Carry them in your bosom as a nurse carries a suckling child to the land, and that you promise on the oath of their ancestries. Where am I to get meat to give to all of this people? For they come weeping to me and say, Give us meat to eat. I am not able to carry all these people alone, for they are too heavy for me. This is the way you are going to treat me? Put me to death at once, if I have found favor in your sight, and, and do not let me see my misery. So the Lord said to Moses, Gather me for me seventy of the elders of Israel, whom you know to be elders of the people and officers over them. Bring them to the tent of meeting and have them take their place there with you. So Moses went out and told the people, the words of the Lord, and he gathered 70 elders of the people and placed them all around the tent. Then the Lord came down in clouds and spoke to him and took down, took some of the spirit that was in him and put it in the 70 elders. And when the spirit rested upon them, they prophesied, but they did not do so again. Two men remained in the camp, one named Eldad and the other Medad, and the Spirit rested on them. They were among those registered, but they, did not go, they had not gone out to the tent. And so the prophecies in the tent, camp, and a young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp, and Joshua, son of Nun, the assistant of Moses, one of his chosen men said, my Lord Moses, stop them. But Moses said to him, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the Lord's people were prophets and that the Lord would put his spirits on them? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll now read Psalms 19, 7 through 17, and we'll read responsibly. We will read the... I'm sorry. The teaching of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the simple. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgment of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. By them also is your servant enlightened, and in keeping them there is great reward. Above all, keep your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not get dominion over me. Then shall I be whole and sound and innocent of great offense.
Second reading from James chapter 5. Are any among you suffering? They should pray. Are any cheerful? They should sing songs of praise and are among you sick. They should call for elders of the church and have them pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. The prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise them up and anyone who has committed sins will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. The prayer of the righteous is powerful and effective. Elijah was a human being like us, and he prayed fervently that we might not reign, and for three years and six months it did not reign on the earth. Then he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth yielded its harvest. My brothers and sisters, if anyone among you wanders from the truth and is brought back by another, you should know that whoever brings back a sinner from wandering will save the sinner's soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. The word of the Lord. I invite the children to come forward for a children's sermon, and let's sing them forward with this little light of mine. Cool. Have you seen that movie? I haven't. I want to see that. This yeah, little light of mine. I'm Could have done it. Okay, well, good morning. So, okay, so um, first thing I want to say to you, I, I'm, I'm looking at the first lesson that was just read, and it's from Numbers, and sometimes all the readings from Numbers are not all that exciting, because you know what a lot of the readings from Numbers are about? Take a guess. What's the name of the book? They're about numbers. Yeah, in part of this book, they go through and they, they do a census of everybody. But that's not what I want to talk about. I don't even know why I'm talking about it. The one is that we hear about Eldad and Me Dad. Wouldn't that be a great name for a rock band? Eldad and Me Dad. I think that'd be cool. Anyway, but that's not what I want to talk about either. The, the, the lesson starts with the rabble among them. Do you know what a rabble is? The rabble among them complain. What's a rabble? Rabble. R-A-B-B-L-E. Had to check. Rabble is a bunch of people who aren't happy. They're grouchy. They're tired of stuff. They want change. Grrr. Right? <laughs> Right? The rabble among them. And the rabble were God's people. What's up with that? Can you imagine God's people getting upset about something? I can. Mm. Yeah. Um, it happens. It happens to all kinds of people. And, and what they were complaining about doesn't matter so much. But oh, the, fact, the fact that they were complaining, you know, these things happen. So, and then Moses complained. Moses, who was a great hero, patriarch of the faith, right? He complained, and God took care of what he was worried about, and they all lived happily ever after. Amen. Guess what? I just shortened the story yes. a whole lot, because there was a whole lot of other stuff in there um, as well. What? This is the money of freight bills. Right. Yeah, yeah. Right. I started talking. Oh. Okay, can we get back to the children's sermon? Okay, so the rabble ended up getting to where they wanted to go, where God wanted them to go, and they ended up doing okay. It just, there's some rough spots along the way. And I think that happens in our lives too. I'm sure you have days that are really great, and you have days that are just kind of blah. Lonely. 
Like days that and are just kind of uh, school days. School days, <laughs> yeah, that uh, happens. Uh, yeah, too bad Ashlyn wasn't here because she'd argue with you because she loves school days. Uh, um, anyway, uh -oh. um, they get blah, sometimes we get cranky, but no matter how we feel, no matter what's going on, God goes with us every day. Fold your hands. We're going to share a prayer. Ready? Dear God. Dear God. Thank you for today. Thank you for today. Thank you for blah days. Thank you for blah days. For cranky days. For cranky days. And for happy days. And for happy days. And for joyous days. And for joyous days. And for being with us always. And for being with us always. Amen. Amen. All right. Stand up. Congregation, let's join in blessing these kids. Stand up, face the congregation. Children of God, let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Amen. Go back to your seats. Gospel acclamation. <coughs> Gospel according to Mark. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. John said to Jesus, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to stop him because he was not following us. But Jesus said, Do not stop him, for no one who does a deed of power in my name will be able soon afterward to speak evil of me. Whoever is not against us is for us. For truly, I tell you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of Christ will by no means lose the reward. If any of you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believe in me, it would be better for you if a great millstone were hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed than to have two hands and to go to hell to the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame than to have two feet and be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to stumble, tear it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and to be thrown into hell where the worm never dies and the fire is never quenched. For everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good, but if salt has lost its saltiness, how can you season it? Have salt in yourselves, and be at peace with one another. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. I don't know about preaching about angels is any easier than preaching on that gospel lesson uh, for today. There are a couple of cool things in there, but a couple of difficult things too. But today, we're going to talk about angels. There are few things in scripture or even in culture that have more urban legend built around them. What's the first thing you think of when you hear the word angel? Christmas, what? Singing. Singing. Yeah. Heaven. Wings. 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 Halos. Halos. Halos, yes. A message. A message. <laughs> what? What'd you say? No angels. Snow. Oh, snow angels. Oh, those are fun, aren't they? 
The big difference between no angel and snow angel, right? <laughs> Angels? I'll come back to you. Other things about angels that you remember. Guardian. What? A guardian. Guardian. Oh, yes. Carrying lots of eyes. <laughs> There's all kinds of things we think about when we hear angels. Um, and many of them, I hate to tell you, are urban legend. Um, but there are many things in Scripture about angels and about what they do. First thing we know most often about angels is they are messengers of God. They bring a message to someone or to a whole bunch of people, depending upon what the situation is. Um, you know, we have this image of, you know, the little fluffy wings and white robes and halos and all of that stuff. We never get a really good description of angels. We hear about them, but we don't always know what they look like. So we are influenced by art and stories and, like I said, urban legend. Um, apparently, most of them are musicians because they play um, harps or lutes, which is a kind of stringed instrument, or trumpets. Um, sometimes those really long trumpets, I think those are cool. Um, they fly around praising God. We hear about that in the, in the heavenly court, in, in God's throne room. Um, John Travolta is not an angel, okay? You saw it in a movie, but it was only a movie, okay? For those of you younger, yeah, just don't worry about it. <clears throat> um, and we talk about angels in a hierarchy, right? There are archangels, and then there's common angels you know like shh, they're still way up above us but anyway and so how many archangels do you think there are 300 no no not one not two not three four count them four but then one of them got booted off the island um so, there are four archangels. Can you name them? I gave Gabriel, you a Michael. Gabriel, Michael. Dan. No, not Pastor Dan. Sorry. <laughs> I thank you for that. But... Mitchell. What's that? Mitchell. Oh, you might be quoting Jewish tradition. And uh, I'm not going to say you're wrong because you, <laughs> you know more than me. You started to say. Oh, you, oh so you said that. Oh. Yes, that, that is kind of funny to think of me as an archangel. Um, Raphael is the other one. And the fourth one that got booted off the island, come on, you all know his name? Lucifer. Yeah, yeah, he was one of them. Um, and his buddies got kicked off too. What is Michael famous for? Rowing a boat. Yeah, you know what? Michael never rows a boat in scripture. Never, never, never. Um, that actually comes out of our country's history through the spirituals and the freedom of the slaves and, and all of that. Um, so then that's a fascinating story. Look it up. Um, the, the, the book of Wiki um, is very helpful on that one. Um, boo, boo, boo. And that became a 50s song and, and you know, um, Pete Seeger and a whole bunch of others sang it. Again, if you're younger, yeah. And then there's special angels and what do we call them? There's two of them categories that. Archangels? Not arch, no, not of archangels, of cherubim. seraphim and cherubim. Yes, yes. And they tend to have special roles or multiple eyes or one eye that revolves around their head. That's, that's really cool. Um, so they are guardians. Uh, they, they, uh, one of them is set outside the Garden of Eden, so Adam and Eve can't get back in there. Uh, there's, there's some flying around in the heavenly courts. Uh, some have six. Uh, wings, not just two. Uh, that's apparently the luxury edition. Um, <laughs> so we have the archangels. Gabriel seems to get all the cush jobs, right? They get to go to announce births and pregnancies and, and all that fun stuff. Michael tends to be the defender, the tough guy. Um, <clears throat> uh, Jewish tradition has up to eight archangels. That's why um, I said what I did before, and I don't know all of them. Um, 
but uh, you know th there are some some differences in the tradition. Now, what do you mean, or what does a human being mean when they call another human being an angel? Obviously, it doesn't mean they have wings and a halo. They are, they are guardians or someone that's with them. They could be a guardian or someone with them. Yes. They're helpful. Helpful. Kindness. Kindness. Good deeds. Good deeds. Advocate. Yes, all of those things. All of those things. They act above and, and beyond for us. Sometimes we see them as an agent of God or someone sharing that message um, with us. Or they might even be acting um, in a divine sort of way. <clears throat> and there's all kinds of angel stories in Scripture. We just don't always hear a lot about the angels. Um, of course, you think Christmas, you know, the big, the big scene for the angels, you know, they, the angel shows up, tells the shepherds, and then there's a heavenly host of angels singing. That's their, uh, uh, their big cameo in, in scripture. Um, but there's many other places. In the Old Testament, Jacob spends the night wrestling with a man who then knocks his hip out of joint. Um, and it, scripture starts with Jacob wrestled with a man. But by the end of the story, Jacob says it was an angel of God, or it was the face of God. He, he elevated it even, even more. Um, we hear about Abraham and um, Sarah's uh, slave woman who had a child, and they ran away. And an angel of the Lord got to them and kept them safe until Abraham got to them and brought them back. Uh, Sodom and Gomorrah, before the places were destroyed, an angel came and led uh, Lot and his family out of there. There's many places where angels announce things or appear and, and share news uh, with people there. Um, of course, Revelation is chock full of angels. Uh, we hear about an angel in, in each of the seven cities where the letters um, are written to. And there's angels blowing trumpets and, and all kinds of uh, fun things there. And it seems to be in the New Testament, after the Gospels and Acts, where angels get a little more rough and tumble, a little more fierce um, in what they do with their flaming swords and, and, uh, and appearances and all of that. And I say all that not to mock angels. Um, it's, it's interesting um, what we do as, as human beings with things like that. Angels are a lot like ninjas. You know, you don't ever see them or you might only catch a glimpse of them. Um, and so what tradition has done, tradition has kind of filled in some of the blanks uh, for us. And that's where some of the urban legend comes in too. But what we do know in scripture is that angels are messengers of God. They deliver news or marching orders or help in times of crisis. They are agents of grace and love and peace. We hear visions of the prophets, uh, like Isaiah's uh, story, call story in chapter 6, for example, um, of angels in the throne room of God, singing praises. And even the angels are careful not to look directly at God. Uh, and it's in these two roles uh, that we see, uh, that we do see in Scripture, that we associate most with angels, singing praises to God. Um, and angels as messengers um, in scripture, um, but we also can think of that in our lives too. And I had asked you to share over the last couple of weeks to share your angel stories, to write them up and to post them on the door out in the narthex. And I got two, um, and they were very helpful by the way because they went home and typed them up and printed them and put them up on the door, very easy to read. Uh, I know my handwriting is hard to read, but some of you are like right behind me there. So uh, thank you for typing those up. But in both of those stories, um, images were shared uh, about people in crisis. Um, in one, both the ill parent and the child had different but similar visions. The other one, the ill parent saw an image that is still real and even seen by the child. Well, and in both stories, the child is actually an adult. <clears throat> Michael. 
What I found interesting in those two stories was the description of how the angels were perceived. One described them as butterflies, which if you think about it, yeah, pretty similar to the, the depiction that we hear in scripture. And it's also a symbol of the resurrection, which is even more cool. The other had two images, one as being bathed in a, in a light of some kind that lifted away some of the, the fear and worry. The other one shared a, a, an image or a feeling of warm liquid gold being poured. Um, and that was connected for them to all the prayers that were being offered um, for them. Um, and she, the one who was ill, could even picture who those people were that were praying for her. Definitely not your fluffy, white-winged critters that we normally think about. But definitely messengers, a message from God by an unconventional angel. The point of all of this for me is that we often miss what, on, on what and how God is acting because we are looking for the wrong things. Angels come to us. Messengers from God speak to us in a whole variety of ways. If we could just, just open our, our eyes, our hearts, our imaginations, uh, and open those enough to see and hear God speaking, that, that um, door would have been plastered with angel stories. Sometimes those angels are sitting right next to you at worship or at work or even a stranger when you're out and about. So we celebrate angels today, the ones in the Bible, the urban legend ones, and the ones that manage to touch our lives too. And, and this day is called St. Michael and all angels um, and the others don't even get mentioned, which is unfortunate because there are so many that, um, that do get mentioned. Uh, but they serve a really important role. And we give thanks to God for continuing to speak to us, whether it's through the word or through hymns or through angels that interact with us in a variety of ways. We thank God for those messages to us and the ways that God reaches out to us where we are, often in crisis or need, but in joyful times, in regular days, in those cranky days that I talked about earlier. And we are blessed, blessed by God for all that God does for us. Amen. Please stand for the hymn of the day, 834, Immortal Invisible.
Please join me in the reading of the Apostles' Creed, printed on the card in the back of your hymnal and on the screen. I believe in God, Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please prepare yourself for prayer. You may sit, stand, or kneel as you are able. <laughs> Drawn together in the power of the Holy Spirit, we pray with confidence for the church, God's good creation, and all who are in need. We pray for the people of God in all places. Shape our witness to the good news of Jesus that we joyfully share your transforming love with all whom we encounter. We pray especially for the Mitchell family, the Mosier family, and the Nicholson family. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. We pray for the healing of the earth. Help us to work for the renewal of oceans and seas, marshes and estuaries. Uphold and inspire us with the work of conservationists, oceanographers, and all who care for fragile ecosystems and habitats. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for peace and cooperation among local and global communities. Bless the efforts of community organizers, international aid workers, and all those who work for justice and peace around the world, especially Jeffrey Kuhn, Warren Kuhn, and Keenan Miller. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. We pray for all who are in need, for all who grieve, bring consolation, to all who are weary or lonely, bring solace, for all who fear, bring justice and peace. By your grace, make your presence known among all who call to you for healing, especially Lois Wolf, Melissa Winslow, Mae Wieselmeyer, Nancy Schuert, Gary Stewart, Donna Harris, and those we name aloud are within our hearts. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. We pray for caregivers, doctors and nurses, home health aides and counselors, and those who care for loved ones, young and old. Sustain them in their work, give them patience and wisdom as they are with those who need them. Help us to build a health care system that supports all. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We give thanks for all the saints who now rest in your eternal presence. In thanksgiving for their lives of faithful service and witness, we commend them to your loving care. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We entrust these and all of our prayers to you, holy God, in the name of your beloved child, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And always. Well, thank you. Please share a sign of peace with one another and with those attending virtually. <clears throat> Just a, a logistical note uh, at this time, we are going to sing the choir anthem and then we will do the noisy offering because those two things don't mix very well. Uh, so if you would enjoy our anthem uh, and then we will take part in the noisy offering.
peaceful noises. Very peaceful noisy offering. <laughs> Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, source of every gift of your creation. By these gifts and with our lives, help us to serve one another and all in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen.
It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you. Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth, and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Thanks, Father, through Jesus Christ, your beloved Son, whom you sent in this end of the ages to save and redeem us and to proclaim to us your will. He is your word, inseparable from you, through whom you created all things and in whom you take delight. He is your word, sent from heaven to a virgin's womb. He there took on our nature and our lot and was shown forth as your Son, born of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary. He, our Lord, Jesus fulfilled all your will and won for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands in suffering in order to free from suffering those who trust you. He is the one who handed over to a death he freely accepted in order to destroy death, to break the bonds of the evil one, to crush hell underfoot, to give light to the righteous, to establish his covenant, and to show forth the resurrection, taking bread, and giving thanks to you, <clears throat> said, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering then his death and resurrection, we take this bread and cup, giving you thanks that you have made us worthy to stand before you and to serve you as your priestly people. Send your spirit upon these gifts of your church. Gather into one all who share this bread and wine. Fill us with your Holy Spirit to establish our faith in truth that we may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ, through whom all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray together as our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Jesus welcomes you to his table. Come, here is your God. Please be seated. All are welcome to join in this meal this day. Our Lord invites us all to at uh, his table. Uh, please follow the usher's instruction as you uh, come forward. And for those of you communing at home this day, the body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. <clears throat> the body of Christ given for you. Blood of Christ shed for you. Oh, Lamb of God, you bear the sin.
given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. body of Christ given for you. The 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 body of Christ given for you. Those who are able, please rise. <clears throat> May this body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ protect you and keep you in his grace, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Holy God, you have welcomed us to this meal and fed us with dignity at your table. Send us now to welcome others and to be at peace with one another. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. We have a few announcements to share. Thank you for the noisy offering and the silent offering that went in there, too. It's going to go for the children's clothing closet. My tongue is not working today. Next week, the, we will serve at the community kitchen. So if anybody wants to make any cookies or cake, we'll be glad that you can bring them to church, and I'll take them over. Thank you. And counters, you got your work cut out for you today. So I'm sure they would take more help if uh, you would like to, to help out. This isn't as much of an announce, well, it's a public service announcement, really. Um, last week I did a, a temple talk uh, before the lessons to talk about um, what had happened when our place was, was broken into. Um, and we're still working on, on some of the details of that. But I just want to remind you, I cannot emphasize this enough 
because we are all creatures of habit and we are in some bad habits. I want us to get in good habits. So if you go out a door of this building, please make sure it's closed. Even the door next to it, if you're going out a double door, right? Make sure they're closed, tug on them, and you got to do this every single time. Uh, remember that Tina or others are here in this place alone a good bit of time, so please don't go leaving the place uh, unlocked or unsecured if you leave anyone else here. If you're here for a meeting, please lock the place up after your crew gets here. And again, every time. Uh, we're, we've fixed one thing wrong with one of the doors. We're, we're working on some other options. Council meets this week to, uh, to talk over some of those things. Any ideas you might have, please share them with me or one of our council members um, before Tuesday. And if you come in at an odd time and something seems amiss, get out. Don't be a hero. Um, if there's uh, things that look way out of, um, out of the ordinary, please feel free to call me or call the police if it definitely looks broken into. And please, don't ever feel you have to come in here armed. We really don't need that to escalate anything else um, that goes on or to shoot innocent people that wander through here without turning lights on. So um, please, just be careful, be alert, don't be scared. This has happened once. We only lost a couple of hundred dollars at most. Um, we're not going to overreact or panic but we do need to be more careful and in our securing of this place. So, enough about that. Invite those who are able to please rise for the benediction. God Almighty, God most merciful, bless you keep you, and give you peace. Amen. Our closing hymn on eagle's wings, and it's, just follow along.
Oh, we were just friends. We, we were.